Mock draft number nine. Um, all of these have been available in podcast form. If you've missed any of them, um, you can go back and listen to them. A couple of them are in actual episodes of shows, but um, they're, they're all in podcast form. And I promise we're going to be getting them up on YouTube quickly here in the next few days. Um, if you've noticed a delay, I apologize. Although if you're watching this on YouTube at this point, then the delay is obviously over. But anyway... We have been going through each position in a 12-team half PPR draft to um, see what is the best strategy going forward in your drafts. The last couple of times, we've ended up with the same player uh, at as our first overall pick, Saquon Barkley, but vastly different teams after that. So I am quite looking forward to seeing what we get from team number nine as we rapidly approach the close um, of this particular exercise and get ready for draft season next week. So we will hit start draft, we will hit OK, and let's get into it. One more time, I always forget that I need to mute it because this thing makes noise every time. Um, nothing unpredictable. Oh, we, we are not getting Saquon Barkley this time. He goes fifth overall. So ahead of us, uh, Christian McCaffrey goes one, Jefferson two, Jamar Chase three, Eckler four, Barkley five. You have Tyreek Hill at six, Cooper Cup seven, Travis Kelsey eight, and now we are here at the number nine spot. They are almost begging us to go Bijan Robinson, but there's one more player I'm comfortable taking ahead of Bijan in this spot, and that player is the one we're going to click on, Nick Chubb. He might be the most talented running back in the National Football League, and he is in a great spot um, in terms of competition in that backfield. So I I like what the we are getting in the possibility of going with Nick Chubb. So um, after us, Bijan Robinson goes, then it's Patrick Mahomes, Derrick Henry, and three wide receivers, A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, and C.D. Lamb. Quite frankly, admittedly, was really hoping that wouldn't happen. Do not, do not enjoy what just happened with that. I was hoping to go with another wide receiver here. Um, and there is still a pretty good option. So it is basically for me between Stephon Diggs at wide receiver and Josh Jacobs at running back. I think because we have two of those options there, it's too early to go with, with Josh Allen, although we have gone quarterback early, and I, I personally don't believe that it's burned us so far. So to me, it is between Josh Jacobs and Stephon Diggs, and because we have been worried about how wide receiver looks, we are going to keep this wide receiver run going and go with Stephon Diggs. Incredibly talented and also someone in a, a high-powered offense. So after Diggs, another receiver goes, and Amon Ross St. Brown, Josh Jacobs does end up coming off the board. Um, this is where using ADP does kind of fall apart. There's no way Jonathan Taylor is going that early um, at any other point in drafts now, given the situation. So it, it has kind of looped around back to us. For those of you watching on YouTube, you can see what has happened since, but it's uh, Garrett Wilson has gone. A couple more quarterbacks and Hurts and Allen. Um, Najee Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, that one kind of stings. We were hoping, uh, we, we've had him on a, a few teams now. And uh, so here we are now. At quarterback, available still is Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Justin Her 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 Herbert, sorry, and Justin Fields. So we're still in a, a tier of quarterback where we're comfortable. Um... At running back, it is Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, Aaron Jones, Kenneth Walker, and Damian Pierce. So, no one who I feel the need to, to reach on right away. At receiver, it's Devonta Smith, Debo Samuel, um, Calvin Ridley, Keenan Allen, and Amari Cooper with DeAndre Hopkins and DJ Moore following. We have done this a couple of times. We are going to do it here. I think Debo Samuel is one of the most talented wide receivers in this league. We brought him up on the podcast yesterday about um, undervalued players in fantasy football. I feel like the fact that we are getting him in the third round is almost criminal. So we will gladly take that. A couple more wide receivers come off the board in Smith, Ridley, and Allen. Two running backs came off in Jameer Gibbs and Aaron Jones. And another quarterback with Lamar Jackson off of the board as well. So now at running back, um, still pretty well the same. Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, Damian Pierce, J.K. Dobbins, and Miles Sanders, your next five. At wide receiver, it's Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, and Jerry Judy. Uh, at quarterback, Burrow, Herbert, Fields, Lawrence are all still out there. I feel like, oh, and the, the tight ends, Kittle, Hawkinson, Waller, Pitts. I feel like we can still wait on quarterback. One more go around here. Um, at running back, there's a couple of question marks there. I like Damian Pierce a lot. I love Brees Hall, but not this year. Um, coming back from an injury, that just, it concerns me a little bit. Kenneth Walker is someone, let, let's, they, they seem to, oh, maybe I just added him to a watch list. I'm not sure. Um, Kenneth Walker has been back at practice now, uh, according to this. Oh, that was 13 days ago. So Kenneth Walker is doing just fine practice-wise right now. That's an, an interesting one. To me right now, we are between Kenneth Walker and and DJ Moore. Um, we have kind of tripled up with the, the the Samuel 
and more back to back at wide receiver before. So let's let's mix it up and see what we get when we draft Kenneth Walker and don't double up on wide, re wide receiver there. Um, so DJ Moore does come off the board with the eighth pick of the fourth round. Two quarterbacks went right after us with Joe Burrow and Justin Fields. Another one comes off in Justin Herbert. Two tight ends come off the board in Kittle, Waller, a third tight end in Hawkinson. So now we are getting to a point where we're feeling a little bit uncomfortable. There are two tight ends... Uh, I, I would take Pitts, but there are a couple of tight ends that I'm okay with, with Goddard and Ingram, but I have to get one of them. And there is one quarterback I'm okay with before the tier absolutely breaks. And so to me, this is a pressure point. Um, just quickly making sure, running back, Madison, Connor, Kamara, Javante Williams, and Dalvin Cook, I feel perfectly fine passing on all of them for now. Um, at wide receiver, McLaurin, London, Watson, Godwin, Ayuk, and Mike Williams. There's a couple in there that I, I'm a little worried about maybe passing on um, for a quarterback, but I'm going to assume at least one of them is going to come back around to us. So we're going to go Trevor Lawrence in this spot. Make sure that's what I'm wanting. I I want in the, those, those top six quarterbacks, I want at least one of them uh, to come back around to me. So Watson and London at wide receiver do come off. Uh, running backs, Madison, Connor, and Cook also come off of the board and one tight end in Kyle Pits. So it is at this point, once again, checking in at running back, we're totally fine with, with what is available, um, still being there for a while. McLaurin, honestly, it was down to Watson in London for me. I was kind of hoping one of the two would, would swing their way back around here at the, the top part of the sixth round. They don't. So at this point, we are going to take the other onesie position, uh, and we are going to go with Dallas Goddard. Um, so we have locked in quarterback, we've locked in tight end, we are not going to be drafting backups at either of those spots. Our run on wide receivers happens with McLaurin, Williams, and Kirk, um, and Godwin and Ayuk, but they are kind of broken up a bit with Kamara, Montgomery, um, and Rasheed White. More wide receivers coming off in Evans, Pickens, uh, Smith and Jigba, and Brown, and now we are back here in the seventh round. At running back, it is A.J. Dillon, Antonio Gibson, Zach Charbonnet, and Khalil Herbert at wide receiver. It's Michael Pittman, Deontay Johnson, Jordan Addison, Jahan Dotson, and Brandon Cooks. I'm really intrigued by Deontay Johnson. It feels like the, the more this preseason has gone on, the more people have really been talking him up and people that I trust. So we are going to go, the hope here in the next couple of rounds, we're going to go Deontay Johnson, and then there's that cluster of running backs who we just went through, specifically um, Gibson, Charbonnet, Herbert, my hope is we can land one of them on the come uh, on the the comeback around here, and I, I'll feel really good about where that this team has headed. So Johnson goes, there goes um, Gibson has been drafted, Dylan's been drafted, Dotson's drafted, but uh, the the one that we were hoping came back around to us was a Khalil Herbert. He is still there. We're not going to let it ride. We are going to take Khalil Herbert. I think. We he has been a staple of basically every team we've drafted so far. I think he is the a extremely talented running back, and he's the number one back right now with Chicago. Charbonnet does get drafted, so he's not going to swing back around to us. That Zay Flowers one kind of stings a little bit, but when when you draft in the back part on a back-to-back, -back, you can't assume that anyone you want is going to swing back around. So we are here again at the ninth overall pick of the ninth round. We have um, at running backs available, Samaji Pirine, Elijah Mitchell, Devon A. Chain, and Ezekiel Elliott at wide receiver. It's Kadarius Tony, Quinton Johnson, Traylon Burks, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Cortland Sutton. All wide receivers who I'm actually kind of fond of um, at this point. And that, that is part of how the, this offseason has kind of gone on. So maybe... Maybe this is a shift now. Maybe we should start to be looking for running backs a little bit earlier on because there are some guys now in the ninth, 10th round who we are comfortable with. I'm going to go Quinton Johnson and bank on uh, a bit of injury issues happening with the uh, LA Chargers receiving core this year, but uh, I like Quinton Johnson quite a bit. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kadarius Tony, Odell Beckham Jr., other wide receivers will come off. Another defense goes, another quarterback goes in Aaron Rodgers, and we are back around at the fourth overall pick of the 10th round. Traylon Burks, Cortland Sutton, Elijah Moore, and Alan Lazard are available at wide receiver, and no running backs have gone in that time, so nothing changed there. I'm going to go Traylon Burks. I like his potential. I, I think that when everyone was healthy last year, including him, he was actually showing that he, he could be something. And so when we're building up the depth here in our receiver room, I think he is someone that we can count on to, to help that build that up. Cortland Sutton goes right after him. Finally, another running back goes in Samaji P. Ryan, but now another one run on receivers with more uh, Lazard and Bateman going before the 10th end closes. Thielen goes at the top of the 11th round. 
Ezekiel Elliott was a running back who I was kind of hoping might be able to, to swing back to us. He gets drafted a couple of picks before us. Um, Cole Komet and Geno Smith were the ones who went immediately before us. So at running back right now, it's Damian Harris, Tank Bigsby, Tyler Algier, Raheem Mostert, Jalen Warren. Uh, those are the ones who are available at this point. Um, at wide receiver, it's Sky Moore, Jamison Williams, Tyler Boyd, Rasheed Rice, and Jacoby Myers, along with Romeo Dubs and Darnell Mooney. There are some back end of the draft picks that I like, some guys who we have been ending up with uh, kind of every time. I, I have been talking about how I think Tank Bigsby is going to get that backfield, and so because of that, we are going to go with Tank Bigsby one more time here at the running back spot. A run of running backs here with Bigsby, Harris, Algier, and Mostert. Then it's Sky Moore, another defense in the Ravens, a kicker in McPherson, and it is back to us. At wide receiver, I think we're, we're probably going to get one of Dubs and Mooney at the very end of this. Um, but there's still a couple of running backs who I'm intrigued by. So we're going to get one of those and one of the, the wide receivers, and that's probably going to be it for our, our skill positions here. So we're going to go Jalen Warren, someone who has a, a lot of hype around him. A run on kickers has now taken place um, with a, a number of them coming off of the board. Kendra Miller, a running back who we might have thought about in that spot. Uh, Tyler Boyd is off, but... Our wide receiver duo does not get picked, so we're going to go with um, Romeo Dubs here. Just a touch over. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't have that ranked that way. So I'm going to go Darnell Mooney um, as a big play threat for Chicago. And now with our last two picks, we haven't been in this spot for a bit using our last two picks on kickers and defense, but we still get Miami in this um, in this position. We just talked about, um, if you're listening on the podcast, we just talked about the most talented teams in the league, and I, I marked down Miami. I think one of the biggest offseason acquisitions was them getting Vic Bangio, and so I, I think Miami has a, a pretty good defense that we're going to pick. And so with our final selection, we will be taking a kicker, whoever is left. But overall, this is another team. I like this team. I don't love this team. So our starting quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. Our running backs are Nick Chubb and Kenneth Walker. Our wide receivers are Stephon Diggs and Debo Samuel. Um, tight end is Goddard. Our flex will probably be Deontay Johnson. And then we have a few guys who um, are some like potential depth plays and potential home run swings. There's actually a lot of home run swings here at the end with uh, Herbert, Quinton Johnston, Traylon Burks, Tank Bigsby, Jalen Warren, and Darnell Mooney. So our last kicker will, of course, be Dicker the Kicker, and that will be that. So overall, I think this is a strong team. The The depth is uh, uh, quite a few hopes and wishes. Absolutely it is. But I, I think we have the potential with this team. Um, I, I think at least a couple of those are going to hit this year. So I do feel like there is a real strong foundation with a, a real good starting lineup on this squad. So that is... That's how we would roll if we went with the, the number nine overall selection. Thank you all so much for watching this. Uh, if you're listening on podcast, rate, review, subscribe wherever you can. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, like this video, um, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff really, really, really does help out. In terms of what is coming up next here on the channel, there will be another mock draft that will be coming out tomorrow. Um, that will be from the number 10 position. Mock draft 11 will be Friday. Mock draft 12 will be in a special Saturday episode. Also coming up on Friday. It is a Fights and Football Friday, so we're going to have more NFL previews. Um, we are also going to be looking at two wrestling pay-per-views or premium live events happening this weekend with AEW All Out and WWE Payback. So again, my name is Peter Klein. You can find, if you're watching on YouTube, I have a podcast called Couch Potato Diary. Comes out at least three times a week. If you want to get in touch, you can find me on social media, Twitter and Instagram. I am at Primetime Klein. Same thing goes for TikTok. Um, you can email the, uh, the show Couch Potato Diary at yahoo.com. It's also twitch.tv slash PK. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening. And I will talk to you all later.